being uh, being a, a professor, uh, I couldn't help uh, changing <laughs> the title uh, of uh, my presentation. <laughs> uh, but I have to explain to you uh, why I thought I, uh, I should do so. Uh, when I drafted the submission, uh, I was uh, willing to share with you uh, a piece of empirical work that is uh, in, in process. And uh, I felt, well, given uh, the, uh, the, the topic, uh, the broad topic of the workshop, maybe I should step back a little bit from that little narrow uh, empirical piece that I'm doing and uh, try to uh, share with you some, uh, my understanding of uh, the state of the conversation about democracy in management, scholarship, and education. Uh, and that really, this is what motivates me, that what I'm going to share with you is what motivates me uh, to undertake this kind of, uh, th th this line of work. So uh, it, it, uh, let me, before I elaborate on the blind spot, let me just show, uh, share with you uh, two, two quotes from uh, people who are uh, who you can hardly, uh, you know, uh, categorize as leftists or Marxists uh, or, uh, or or whatever thing uh, com coming close to that. This is from uh, when Warren Bennis, who is a, a leadership guru uh, in the U.S., and this is a 1964 uh, HBR HBR article, and uh, this kind of statement. I mean, the uh, what. What Slater and Bennis are saying here is, is, is very powerful. Uh, the other quote is, uh, well, Zwedling is less known uh, to us, but that's, uh, th th that's also something uh, telling. But the, more importantly, I would like to s also emphasize Charles Handy, another guru, another management guru, and uh, he said, one of the great paradoxes of our time is that, it's, it, it, that it is tot totalitarian. I mean, the, this is a strong word totalitarian, centrally planned organizations owned by outsiders that are providing the material wherewithal of the great democracies. Uh, and I could go on uh, with, with quotes like this from a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And I, th I said to myself, okay, uh, if, if indeed there may be or there is a, a paradox, why is it, why is it that we, in business schools, we management professors and educators uh, do not seem to take this this this, this paradox or, or, or the challenge to think about democracy seriously. Uh, so what I do, uh, uh, and this is the, where the blind spot uh, comes in, I do I try to document uh, some uh, do some <laughs> systematic research on the state of democracy in management scholarship. And I did just this uh, simple exercise. Bless uh, you. Uh, uh, well, EBSCO, you are all familiar with, with the database. And uh, what you can see here is that uh, econ uh, economists and sociologists uh, seem to uh, have some interest in democracy. Uh, you see the count in, uh, of uh, democracy in title or abstract. And I look at our mainstream uh, journals, <coughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's the, the, the picture is quite uh, interesting. It's quite interesting. Uh, uh, the, the funny or the ironic thing is I find in Harvard Business Review a lot more discussion a lot more articles about democracy, democratic management, and so on and so forth. The, uh, back in the 40s and the 50s, I browsed the Harvard Business Review systematically. The, the, uh, and the beginning of the 70s, uh, there were heated debates about uh, you know, the, the, the legitimacy of management and the challenge uh, to management uh, by the, you know, uh, some you know, alternative uh, social movements, industrial, uh, the big industrial clashes in the US of the, the 40s and so on. So, so I, uh, it's just ironic that the Harvard Business Review has been involved in this conversation more than the uh, uh, mainstream academic journals. So my argument is that, uh, uh, and this is my starting point, uh, there's, uh, I mean, you read the, 
I, I try to read some philosophy, some political science works, uh, social, social theory, and so on and so forth. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, scholarship there, a lot of conversation about you know, uh, the relationship, the interplay between democracy and the common good. The, um, the, the amount of uh, discourse is just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Uh, and I'm just trying to, uh, to digest a little bit of that. Uh, and at the same time, management scholars, we have stayed out of the conversation as the, the numbers that I shared with you uh, show. Uh, so the, the few the few works, uh, uh, the few works, uh, and I would say empirical works that are available uh, in this area are produced by left-leaning, radical, uh, and very, very few, very few people, uh, very few left-leaning radical uh, scholars in the U.S. And there are some names that uh, I, I will uh, cite uh, later. And we seem in our in business school, we seem to have settled on. Uh, participative management, responsible leadership, and CSR as the sort of, as far as we can go, uh, or red lines not to be crossed. And uh, we, seem, we seem to somehow believe that democracy doesn't belong. Democracy as a concept doesn't belong to our stuff. Uh, and I even sometimes feel like is it a dirty word? Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just amazing. And I, I, have no, uh, I have no agenda. I mean, uh, I have no normative uh, prescription to make about this. But I'm, I'm just curious now, trying to, curious to understand why is it so? Why do we seem to believe that democracy is not for us? Let's continue. The... Uh, just to document that sort of blind spot, there are, there are a few conferences uh, from time to time, or some even regular conferences, where you see no business school professors. Uh, this, this is this conference, the, the so-called Eastern Conference about Workplace Democracy, held annually during, uh, since 2002, is uh, basically organized by people who do not belong to uh, business schools, who do not even belong to uh, uh, economics departments, these are people you would find in uh, minority studies departments or the gender studies department, people who are everywhere but in the, the, the mainstream. Uh, the, uh, well, uh, the Academy of Management in, in, in 03 uh, uh, chose as a theme, as a conference theme, democracy in a knowledge economy. And when I saw that, I said, mm, what is interesting, uh, something is, uh, is happening. Uh, the truth is uh, nothing follow. Uh, there were uh, three, two or three papers that were published uh, in a sort of conversational mode. Uh, subsequently, not in any of the academy journals, uh, but in the Journal of Management Inquiry, which is positioned as the sort of alternative uh, outlet for anything that doesn't fit in, <laughs> in the mainstream. Uh, the, uh, I, I check uh, the, the educational side. I look at management textbooks. So I just did, did a check on two big uh, sort of textbooks, uh, management textbooks. Uh, the uh, DAFT, this, we're talking about uh, 1,000 1, pages or, or, or more. <laughs> the, only, the only citation of democracy there is in the context of doing business with India, the world's most populous democracy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you had the electronic version of the books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 no. Thanks to thanks, thanks, thanks to the, the, the IT, and I did the same. And uh, Robbins, uh, which is also one of the reference textbooks, uh, there's not a single mention uh, of democracy there. So that's uh, that's why uh, I say uh, there may be a blind spot. And uh, I'm, if there's a blind spot. Then we have to. Then it begs the question. It begs the question whether is it irrelevant? Maybe it's irrelevant, or maybe no, or maybe it's relevant. But at least I think we we must we must engage with the question uh, with 
No, with, without necessarily any preconceptions. I look at uh, some other organizations uh, that some of you are familiar with. Uh, I say maybe, maybe NGOs and uh, governmental or intergovernmental organizations uh, or, or networks are more uh, are ahead of scholarship or scholars. I see the UN, UN Global Compact. Well, it's the, there are a number of prescriptions here that are quite strong. Uh, you say, okay, business should uphold the freedom of association and the effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining. This is a major, would be a major progress in many, many uh, areas of the world than just think, <laughs> just think of China <laughs> and what, what this means. But the, my point here is that you don't see a single, a single mention or use of the word democracy in this. Uh, there must be a reason for that. I don't believe that this is random. The people who have worked on this have spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time wording these things. Uh, I look at the uh, principles of responsible management education uh, signed by 40, 420 institutions. Uh, again, six quite progressive uh, principles. You don't have to read and I won't read, but basically there's not a single a single occurrence of democracy there either. So uh, academics seem to be blind, but they seem to be in good company. All right. Why should we uh, why should we care about democracy in the in the context of management, scholarship, and education? Uh, I think that uh, we should care because uh, the, uh, if we care about the common good and we consider, if we consider that the common good is, is irrelevant despite all the difficulties that we might have to define it, operationalize it and whatever, but if we think that the common good is an agenda for business management, scholars, educators, uh, we can't avoid a discussion of democracy. Uh, I'm not saying that the democracy is the only governance system that can produce or preserve the common goods. I'm not yet stating that yet, but there are people who are stating that, who have been stating that for a long, long time. There are people who have been challenging that. And my ambition is just to bring that conversation inside our community. That's it, just bring that conversation. So the, the moral case, and um, uh, uh, I, I can't go too much in the detail, but basically there's uh, the, the, those who champion or advocate democracy in economic organizations, in the workplace, uh, some of them uh, start with, uh, with this sort of moral, they, they take a moral stance, uh, where well, this is Kantian, you know, so uh, never uh, that the categorical imperative and never use uh, other human beings as means, but as, as ends in themselves. And there are variations of that and uh, we, we don't have time to get into details. And there's also, well, the, the utilitarian or the uh, instrumental case says uh, democracy is good for efficiency. Uh, people who are involved people who decide their own affairs, who manage their own business, uh, and so on and so forth, are, more, are happier, are more satisfied, are more involved, are more effective, and so on and so forth. That's, that's the, 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 the case. But there are also objections, and I must say, there are objections and serious objections. Uh, the, the, there's a moral objection. Uh, economists, many economists, uh, <laughs> yeah, including my friend, my dear friend, Radu, would say, hey, what do you do with property rights? What do you do with property rights? Uh, shareholders, uh, providers of capital, providers of capital uh, are entitled uh, to, uh, to decide because they are, they are taking risk, they are risking their, their, their equity, whatever. they are entitled to run the place. They are entitled to establish the, the hierarchical organization that would best serve their interests. And if you, if you turn uh, business organizations into democracies, then you are jeopardizing property rights. And then you are setting the stage for some totalitarian 
regime, or I mean, that there's, uh, there's also the discussion, uh, I mean, I think that uh, Tocqueville has, uh, has, uh, has addressed this, uh, I think, very well, and there's no probably need to revisit this, but Tocqueville discussed a lot the, 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 the paradox of uh, democracy and liberty, and that um, equality and liberty. So if, if we go too much into, the, 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 into equality, then at the end we may end up with something that would compromise liberty. And there's also the utilitarian objection. Uh, democracies are ungovernable, unmanageable, uh, they're inefficient, and there's, there's quite a bit of there. I mean, some illustrations uh, sorry, I, I had uh, there are some. Uh, the, uh, I can say, say, cite some names. Uh, Levitt, for example, uh, wrote a, a very uh, a very articulate and I think very thoughtful uh, piece in Harvard Business Review, not in an academic journal, uh, in defense of hierarchies and uh, arguing that uh, hierarchies are very good. Jacques or Jake, so I don't know how you, how you pronounce, pronounce In France, we would, we would say Jacques, but, but he was what, one, one of other American gurus uh, in, in measurement stuff. So, okay, well, hierarchies are more efficient uh, than uh, other forms of organization, and then, I don't know, that's uh, part of the utilitarian objection. Uh, my feeling is that uh, the, uh, oh, I'm struck. Let, let me put it this way. I'm struck by uh, the, uh, the, just the, the overwhelming, the sheer number of organizations out there that are run on alternative principles to the professionally managed hierarchical model. There are plenty. It's not only cooperatives. You know, even McKinsey. McKinsey is not. <laughs> McKinsey is, in a way. Is a, is a democracy, I mean, uh, professional service organizations. Uh, I put some names here, but just for the sake of uh, illustration. Uh, uh, my point is that in practice, in practice, there's a, a, a wide variety of organizations that are not run like, you know, GE or uh, whatever I call it, Société Générale, or, or uh, plenty of them. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the hierarchical, professionally managed corporate model, uh, statistically, is is minority. It's a, a very small part of all those uh, possible organizational uh, and govern, governance models. So my feeling is that we are we are just ignoring that, uh, and there are many people experimenting. With, with alternative uh, organization forms that we, are, we just don't care. We just don't care to look. We just don't care. Uh, the, uh, what I would like perhaps to uh, mention, this is a new initiative, World Blue is an organization now that certifies <laughs> democratic management. Uh, and they have, uh, uh, well, they have now some, some names uh, in their membership, Zappos uh, in, in the US, uh, sure, sure is online. Zappos is one of them, but m many others. Uh, interestingly, uh, they have uh, they have ten, ten criteria. But, uh, for uh, yeah, uh, I have two more minutes. I think the criteria they, they have they have ten criteria for democratic management, and known uh, deals with uh, ownership and governance. I emailed them asking why your ten principles do not uh, include that. They say, uh, and, oh. I, I've, I, I still have no answer to my email. This is about two or three weeks ago. I was just struck. So they, they, they say nothing about ownership governance. Uh, OK, so this is uh, what I was saying. You, you find some empirical works, some empirical accounts of uh, democratic organizations and how they work and so on and so forth. But they're mostly produced by people who are ideologically uh, biased in that direction. And I think that it's time for us uh, to uh, take a sort of cold, some sort of cold uh, analytical look at this, uh, at this reality uh, and uh, hopefully uh, produce also some, some materials, some teaching materials and uh, enrich, broaden our, our management curriculum and open our students' eyes uh, on 
these various uh, or, or alternative uh, organizational models. And uh, since I have one minute left, I will, I will give you just a, a, a preview of the, the, the empirical work I'm doing. Uh, currently, I'm investigating in a, 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 a medium-sized insurance company that I met in 1998, uh, and which runs, I mean, uh, Athens, the Greeks and Athens are nothing compared to the, 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 the management system that the, the people who, are, who, who drive this organization have been experimenting with. Uh, the, this is a company that over about 25 years uh, went from participative, quite uh, progressive participative management to participatory democracy with ownership of the firm being transferred to its employees and customers, the insurance agents, and they experiment with participatory democracy and they go through a lot of issues, challenges, and they are currently moving toward a, a representative democracy paradigm. Uh, no time to elaborate on that, but this is something that's still in, uh, in process, and thank you very much, and I think I have done my 20 minutes. Thank you. <laughs>